Hello, Dr. Liz. Hello, Louis. Hello, Sean. How are you? How are How you? Are you? How are you, everyone? Good night. Good seeing you. Thank Who's you. else with us? Who's else with us? Iva, see Iva with us. Good. Good evening, everyone. Let's just wait another few minutes for everyone to join us. Um, Dr. Well, Liz, tell looking us about good. You going? You going uh, again to shut down? What's you happening? Leave it. Wow. He's got you know, uh, news. What's cooking on? Is going to sign a deal with the UAE, and we're going into shutdown. <laughs> So people have very mixed feelings what's going on. But no one really knows what's happening. That's the bottom line. No one knows what's going on here. It's Meshuggah. It's going to shut down. That's the, main, that's, that's the bottom line of it. Yeah. But do you think it's going to come, it's going to, come to it? You think that's going yes. to come to it? Yes. I'll, do it? I'll do it. But no one thinks it's even going to help. Because um, there'll be protests. There are protests. Everyone's all together on the trains. It's, it's my sugar. So they'll have the lockdown, but how's that going to help? So, and you know what? Somebody said it's better to get the virus, the COVID, and then to starve. And it's so sad. You walk and you see so many shops have closed, and it's really affected people financially in a very, very bad way. So the truth is we need, you know, we need leadership. We need uh, the Rabonim to come and speak out. We need people to show the, the Derek, where to go? Because nobody, it's like nobody knows what's happening and nobody trusts anybody either. It's really quite sad. Well, the worst part is in Israel, they're going to have a shutdown by Friday. Yeah, so Sorry. that's, but I don't know if that's going to help so much. I don't know. They well, really, apparently they, they, uh, the people, you know, if you phone people, what are they doing now for Yontif? Oh, I'm getting 30 people over for Yontif and things like that. And it's wrong. It's wrong. They've, they, they've suddenly lost the, the plot there in Israel. Now. But you know what? You know what? People go outside and they see all these protests where there are thousands of people standing next to each other protesting. Or yeah. they these weddings that they've had so many people at different weddings. And, uh, you know, you think, well, what's, what's going on here? You know? Um, yeah. I agree. I agree with you. You know, they just have to use the seichel. I can see that they're looking for trouble. No. everyone. And uh, what I'm going to speak tonight is why do we blow the shofar on your Rosh Hashanah? That's the subject of the show. Why are we blowing the shofar on Rosh Hashanah? So, Be'ezrat Hashem, Na'asev and Atzliyah, I would like to dedicate the show La'ilui Nishmat, Esther Kaden Bat Ketziah, Mordechai Ben Rahma, La'ilui Nishmat, Sion Ben Zinat, La'ilui Nishmat, Esther Bat Moshe Halevi, Nishmatam Tiyeh Tzrura, Betzur Ha'im, Velerfuat, Menashe Naji Ben Farha, Li'ora Bat Miriam, Li'ron, בן שרית, ושאר כל חולה ופצועי עמו בית ישראל בכל מקום שהם. רבותיי, I'm gonna mute everyone, and we're gonna start the show בעזרת השם. So why are we blowing the shofar on ראש השנה? That's the subject of the show. As you all know, we are a few days before ראש השנה. ראש השנה basically is Friday night. And Rosh Hashanah, one of the most important mitzvah, if not the important mitzvah on Rosh Hashanah, is to listen to the sound of the shofar. I again say listening to the sound of the shofar. Where is the source for it? First of all, we have to understand where is the source that we obligate to listen to shofar. <clears throat> so the Torah tells us in a sefer, Bamidbar in Parashat Pinhas in chapter 29, verse 1. It says like this. Lahodesh. That means on the seven months, on the beginning, on the first day of the seven months, Mikra Kodesh Iyelachem. Kol Melechet Avoda Lo Ta'asu. 
That means that on the first of the seven months, okay, what if the seven months is obviously Tishrei, and the first is Aleph of Tishrei. How do you work it out that Tishrei is the seven months? Because when do we start counting the months? It's from Sivan. Sorry, from Nisan. So in Nisan, if Nisan is the first one, okay, the seven months become Tishrei. The Torah tells us, That's mean it should be a holy day. Okay, a Yom Tov. You're not allowed to do any Melech. Then the Torah add up, Yom Yelachem. It will be a day that you should blow the shofar, that you should sound the sound of the shofar. And Hazal from here learn that it's a positive command from the Torah to listen to the sound of the shofar when? On Aleph Tishrei. That's Rosh Hashanah, Aleph Tishrei. Today we're celebrating two days in Eretz Israel and also in the diaspora. That's the only sorry, that's the only festival that we celebrate two days in Eretz Israel, and that's Rosh Hashanah. And it's a mitzvah to listen to the sound of the shofar. And we have to understand why. Why is it so important that the Torah tell us that we obligate to listen to the sound of the shofar? <clears throat> So I'm going to bring the opinion of Rabbi Saadia Gaon. Rabbi Saadia Gaon, just to give you a bit of history, his name is Rabbi Saadia Gaon ben Yosef. He born around 1,137 years ago. Okay, he born in Egypt. He was a Jewish, from the Jewish people that lived in Egypt, and later on he moved to Babylon, that's Iraq. Okay. And he brings 10 reasons why should we listen to the sound of the shofar. And the reason what I'm bringing to you brought in a book of Rabbi David Abu Darham, and also uh, he bringing it in Ilchot Rosh Hashanah in uh, Siman in chapter Reis Samechte 269, and also Menorat Ma'or in the book of Menorat Ma'or that brought there he bring it in chapter 294, that book been written by Rabbi Tzhak And there we see 10 reasons why we blowing the shofar in Rosh Hashanah. So the most important reason why we blow the shofar in Rosh Hashanah, Hazal explain, and that's why Rabbi Saad Yagaon bring Rabbi Saadia Gaon say like this. Rabbi Saadia Gaon say that the most important is that David and Melech tell us in a book of Tehillim something very interesting. In chapter 98, verse 6, David and Melech say, That's mean in the sound of the trumpet, and in the sound of the horn of the shofar, okay, you should cheer to Almighty the King. What is it me? There, Rabbi Sa'ad Yagon explained that one of the most important and one of the important mitzvah in Rosh Hashanah is to crown HaKadosh Baruch Hu on us. That means that we obligated to crown HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So how do you crown? Say Rabbi Sa'ad Yagon, David HaMelech already told us that when a human being become a king, what did they do in the olden days? They used to blow the trumpet, they used to blow the horn, to say that here we have a new king, and that's a human being, Lahabdi Lahabdi. Say Rabbi Saadia Gaon, that's what we should do on Rosh Hashanah. That means when we listening to the sound of the shofar, we have to remember that we're crowning HaKadosh Baruch Hu on us. That's reason number one, the first reason. The second reason is that say Rabbi Saad Yagaon that we know that Rosh Hashanah is the first day of Aseret Yemei Tshuva. That means after that start the 10 days of Aseret Yemei Tshuva. And Aseret Yemei Tshuva is the day that HaKadosh Baruch Hu given us chance to do repentance before Yom Kippur. 
So say, Rabbi Saadia Gaon, you know what's the second reason? It's to remind us that when you hear the sound of the shofar, that you are already in a 10 days before Yom Kippur. That means that you start Aseret Yemei Tshuva, the 10 days just before Yom Kippur. That means that it's come to give us a chance to do Tshuva. The third idea is, is to remind us Ma'amad Har Sinai. What it means, Ma'amad Har Sinai? It's to remind us that we receive the Holy Torah on Mount Sinai. What does that have to do with that? What does one have to do with each other? It says like this, that when we hear the sound of the shofar, it's to remind us that we are actually receiving the Holy Torah like we received it in Mount Sinai. That means that we're going to receive the, the, Torah, the Holy Torah again. That means every year we receive the Torah again. And you say, how can it be? We received it already in Manzana. Yes, Nahon, you are 100% right. But you have to understand that the idea is that every Rosh Hashanah, we actually get reborn. Every Rosh Hashanah, Rabotai, each one of us gets reborn. And you say, how can it be? Simply, because on Rosh Hashanah, we've been judged. And the entire world been judged. Everyone get judged. Who's gonna live lo alenu? Eh, who, sorry, who's gonna live, and who's not gonna live lo alenu? Which country will have a war? Which country not gonna have a war? What's gonna happen in the world? The plague that we see today, that called COVID-19, that's been sentenced on Rosh Hashanah last year. Tap shin pei, and Rosh Hashanah tap shin pei last year, one of the judgment was that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will bring that virus to the world. Please God, this year, Tafshin Pei Aleph, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will take that virus away from us and from the entire world. Not going to be any more sickness. The other idea is that we blowing the shofar, it's to remind us that the prophet we have to compare the prophet, like the words of the prophet, like the sound of the shofar. What does it mean? We know that the prophet always used to come to help us, to warn us, to tell us where we gone wrong. But so some of you are gonna say, wait, I don't understand. Today, we don't have prophet. So how is it gonna remind us prophet? No. We have to understand that the sound of the shofar, it's like we're comparing it to the prophet, that their job was to help us, to direct us in the right channel. So today, that we don't have prophets who they are, those, the gedolim. The gedolim that we have, that help us, which way, on which channel to go, that means which direction to go. Otherwise, we'll go lost. So, say, Rabbi Saad remember that the sound of the shofar has come to help you to follow the prophet. Today that we don't have prophet, we should follow the Gdolei Ador. Whatever they ask him, that's what we must do. And that's the halachot that we should keep. The third idea is, is to remember the destruction of the temple. What is that, the sound of shofar, have to do with the destruction of the temple? So on the pshat of the dvarim, it's to remind us that, please God, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will build Bet HaMikdash. That's what we all wish. But it's come to remind you, because your sin, because your sin, HaKadosh Baruch Hu allowed the enemy to destroy Bet HaMikdash the temple. How did they manage that? Because we done Averot. So by that, that we're listening to the sound of the shofar, it's to remind us, remember, hey, you remember the cheers and how the enemy charged towards Bet Amikdash before they start to destroying it? Remember that sound of shofar? You know what caused it? It's our deed.
That means the sound of the shofar come to remind us the destruction of Bet Amikdash. And that's what the prophet Jeremiah said. Kol shofar shamati, the sound of the shofar I heard. Nafshi to'at milhama. What it means? That in my soul, I can hear the trumpet, the sound of war. It means that it's come to remind us the destruction of the temple, how the enemy, before they start coming and charging and attacking Jerusalem and attacking Beth Amikdash, they blow the trumpet and they blow the horn. In the olden days, before they used to go to a war, they used to blow the shofar. The sixth idea that we have to remember, it's come to remind us the merit of its Hakavinu. That its Hakavinu was the only son that Avraham Avinu had from Sarai Menu. And when Akadosh Baruch Hu asked Avraham Avinu to take him, to bring him, to sacrifice him, was no problem to Avraham Avinu. But it's come to remind us that the shofar, what is it made from the horn of a ram? That it's come to tell us that even it's Hakavinu that was in the age of 37. Okay, many of us think that he was a young boy. He wasn't. He was 37. 37, a person is strong. Avraham Avinu was in the age of 137. You understand? That mean that there is a big difference here, that it's Hakavinu actually marched and was willing to sacrifice himself to Akadosh Baruch. It's mean that it's come to remind us that it's Hakavinu was willing to give himself to Akadosh Baruch. What does it mean? It's come to tell us that Has Shalom, if the enemy come and try to tell us that we should go against HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Never. That we're willing to die, to give ourselves for the sake of the Almighty, and not to go against HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the same like it's Haka Vinodai. And Hazal tell us in the Gemara, in Masechet Rosh Hashanah, in page 16, folio 1. Listen what it says. Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Almighty say, Tiko lefanai bashofar. That means blow in front of me in a hole of a ram. Tiko lefanai bashofar shel ail. That means a kadosh baruchu asks us to blow in Rosh Hashanah in a horn of a ram. Kedesh eskor lachem akedat itzhak ben Avram. That our by that that you blowing the shofar. I will remember the Akedah. And if I remember the Akedah, listen what it says, that means that I will accept your repentance, that means I will redeem you, I will, it, I will write you, I will, uh, what do you call it, for salvation. That means that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will write and will seal every Jew to good luck not to judge us, has v'shalom, for the wrong thing. I don't want to mention it. That means, Hazal tell us, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu asks us to blow the shofar. By that, that you'll hear the sound of the horn of a ram. You remember what it's Hakavinu died, that they done, that he was willing to sacrifice himself. And that merit of it's Hakavinu will stand for us and will redeem us. Another opinion, what is it come, that on a pshat of the dvarim, as you all know, is to mention to us uh, to do tshuva, because the prophet Amos say in chapter 3, verse 6, the prophet Amos asked, when the sound of the shofar Will, will be heard in the town. No one will be scared. What does it mean, scared? In the olden days, they know that if they hear the sound of the shofar, 
that means it's maybe mean a war or means that the enemy is starting to attack and etc or there is problem because people used to stand on top of the wall and they used to look for strange things that happening and if something go wrong they used to blow the horn come the prophet amos and tell us when you hear that sounds of the shofar it's come to tell us that it's time to do tshuva to do repentance to akadosh baruch in uh, the the prophet sefania a matter of fact he said that when you hear the sound of the shofar it's come to remind us hayom adin agadol what it means the yom adin agadol it's the day the big day of judgment on the pshat of the dvarim but it's not so pashut karov yom agadol karov u maher meod yom shofar teruah said the prophet sefania in chapter 1 in verse 13 that here is speaking that before akadosh baruch hu will send the, the after he send the, the mashiah just before that it will be a day of judgment big day of judgment that akadosh baruch hu will do seder ba'olam that mean he will organize everything there is no more chaos like we have now like dr les say now no one know what's happening in israel it's all one big chaos they don't know what they doing they don't know if they doing the right thing and that's what the prophet said about i before the messiah come it will be such a chaos that you'll see thing and you wouldn't understand what you're seeing and we're seeing it today what's happening in the world chaos complete chaos the entire world is in chaos and that's what's going to happen so that sound of the shofar to remind us remember this is the big day the judgment day the nine thing that the nine reason is is to remind us about the coming of the mashiah and that's the positive thing the prophet yeshaya say in chapter 27 in verse 13 vehaya bayom ahu and it will be in that day itaka bishofar gadol it will be blown in a big shofar there is a question amongst the mefarshi why does it have to be shofar gadol why a normal shofar is not enough why it have to be such a great big shofar so then hazal explain what it mean big that when the mashiah come everything going to be big you remember we spoke about it that eret israel actually going to be over all the world and yerushalayim going to be the size of all of eret israel that mean if eret israel going to be on the size of all the world everything going to be extend and expand that mean hazal tell us that when the mashiah come everything going to be big everything going to be huge and that's what it's come to tell us the sound of the shofar will be sound on a great big shofar to remind us when the mashiah come it will be the number 10 that hazal explained it's come to remind us the resurrection of the dead and that's also the prophet ishaya say in chapter 18 verse 3 kol yosh vetavel veshokhne aretz that mean the people that live all over the world and shokhne aretz that mean that people that sleep inside the earth that mean the deceased the people that that die can so nesharim tiru u kitkoa shofar tishmau that mean that you see the miracle okay and you will hear the sound of the shofar is speaking about the deceased that those deceased gonna suddenly gonna, gonna get resurrect akadosh baruch hu gonna resurrect them and what's gonna happen we'll see tihiyat amitim the resurrection of the dead but really if you look at it in a deeper meaning and be'ezrat hashem i'll speak about it all these coming wednesday or thursday just before rosh hashana you know what is the meaning okay of the shofar and there i'm going to speak not only why we blowing the shofar because that we explain today 
we explain how many sound and why there is certain amount of sound that be blowing the shofar and the importance of it. But the Kabbalistic Rebbe explained to us like this. The main reason that we blow shofar is to confuse the evil inclination. The Satan, as Hazal says in the Gemara, Masechet Sota, if I'm not mistaken. The Satan, he's Malach HaMavet, he's the evil inclination. You know, there it says like this, who Malach HaMavet, who a Satan, who Yetzer Ra, and etc. Hazal explained. What does it come to tell us? Hazal come to tell us that when the evil inclination hear the sound of the shofar, he gets confused. He thinks that's the time of the Mashiach, the resurrection of the dead, the time that Mashiach come, and now it's time to get rid of him. So what's happening? He gets confused. And if he gets confused, he doesn't know. So he doesn't have a chance to criticize against us. So what is the sound of the shofar a matter of fact doing? It's confusing the evil inclination. The Kabbalistic rabbi explained. Why? By that, that he hears the sound of the shofar, he thinks, ooh, any minute they're going to slaughter him. Why? Because he hears the sound of the shofar, and we say it every morning. Va'alu moshe'im behar tziyon lishpot et ha'resav v'hayta ha'melucha la'adonai. That means that when we hear the big sound of the shofar, as the prophet say, we have to understand that that's the time that the Mashiach is going to come. That means that's the time of all the evil forces. The time of all the bad is going to disappear from the world. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to send the Mashiach. And only good is going to be. That means that the evil inclination all the bad energy that there is in the world, but you're seeing bad energy, bad people, not going to be exist anymore. Akadosh Baruch Hu will bring the world to salvation. What does it mean to salvation? Hazal explained he's going to bring the world to such a way that even a sheep and a lion can stay together. A sheep and a fox can stay together. That means that there is no more this desire to do harm one to each other. A Kadosh Baruch Hu will bring the world that everyone will live together in peace and harmony. Because usually, if you take the, what do you call it, the lion, he's hungry, he wanna hunt. What does he do? He eat the animal. But when the Mashiach come, Hazal explained that the lion, what is, what is what's going to be his food? If you tell me that he hunt, what, he's not going to hunt? No, no more. He's going to eat exactly like the kosher animal. What is the kosher animal eat? They're going to eat straw. You're going to eat grass. That's what the lion going to eat. That means that when the Mashiach come, going to be such peace and harmony in the world. And Hazal explained that the job of the Mashiach is that all the people in the world are going to choose him, that he's going to be the leader. That means not only the Jewish people, even the nation. All the nation in the world will say, we want you as our king. And that was be his job. That means he's going to be in charge about the nation. So immediately come the question, if he's going to be busy with the nation, who's going to be in charge about the Jewish people? Hazal explained, and the, the Mefarshim explained, it's not so simple. You know who's going to be in charge about the Jewish people? Akadosh Baruch Hu himself. That means the Jewish people are going to be looked after by Akadosh Baruch Hu. The entire world is going to be looked up to the Mashiach, the Jewish Mashiach. And he going to start bringing salvation to the world for all the pain and agony and the sorrow that there is in this world. That means the Mashiach is going to sort up 
the nation. The Jewish people are going to be directly with the Almighty. We have an open line to the Akadosh Baruch. So now, we know that the son of Shofar come to remind us and to wake us up to all of the tragedies that happened to us. The destruction of the temple. For example, why? Because you have a road. You have to do tshuva. The other thing, thing that we explain according to the mystical rabbis to confuse the evil inclination. As Hazal explained in the Gemara in Masechet Rosh Hashanah in page 16, folio 1, Hazal said there that the job of the Shofar is actually to remind the Kadosh Baruch Hu how its Hakavinu was willing to sacrifice himself. And when Akadosh Baruch Hu will hear the sound of the Shofar, how its Hakavinu was willing to sacrifice himself, that will help. His children, when I say his children, the children of Itzhak Avinu, to become unguilty in a judgment, on the day of the judgment. So from here we see how important is the sound of the Shofar on Rosh Hashanah. And before I conclude, I will ask you, I would like to share with you a question that the Or Zawa, the Or Zawa, it's Rabbi Itzhak ben Moshe. He born in the 13th century. Yeah, in the 13th century, he born in Vienna, in the city of Vienna, in Austria. And he been asked like this. In Rosh Hashanah, if there is a Brit Mila, on a day of Rosh Hashanah, if there is a Brit Mila, what's come first? the Brit Milah, you do the Brit Milah first, or you first blow the Shofar, and then you do the Brit Milah, or you do Brit Milah and then blow the Shofar. That's the question that he been asked. So the Or Zarua Rabbi Tzhak ben Moshe given two different ideas, and two different answers, beautiful answer for us to understand. And he said like this, he said, who was the first person to have a Brit Milah. Avraham Avinu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu told them. Okay, he have a Brit Milah. So, the question is become, why then we are blowing the Shofar? We know because, as we mentioned, the rain of Yitzhak Avinu. That when HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Avraham Avinu to take Yitzhak, to sacrifice him, when he took the ma'achelet, what it mean ma'achelet, Hazal explained, is a knife. So why you call it ma'achelet, Hazal say? So he say ma'achelet milshon ma'achal. What it mean ma'achal? That you're eating from it. Uh, many of the, 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 the people doesn't understand. What is the connection between knife and food? He said, no, 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 listen. When Avraham Avinu took the knife to slaughter his son, when Akadosh Baruch Hu told him not to do that, when the angel told him in the name of Akadosh Baruch Hu, he said that knife, the merit of that knife, that's what's standing to each one of us. That means the merit of the knife that's the food that we're benefiting in every generation. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't bring a difficult time, or let's call it a bad plagues on the world, to kill the Jewish people. That means that the Ma'achele, that was the knife, that we actually eating and benefiting from that knife. Also, Hazal there say, I know that I'm moving a bit from the subject, but just to give you, the angel said to, to Abraham Avinu, Atayadati, now I know that what you've done, that you yere Elohim, that you have the fear of heaven. And the Mepharshim asked, what is it? Atayadati ki yere Elohim ata. Now I know that you have the fear of heaven. What does it mean? 
the angel, you know, in every mitzvah that a person do, he create angel. And the angel that Abraham Avinu created when he took his Hak Avinu to the Akeda, he took an oath and he said, Now I know that when it's come to this mitzvah that you created me, I know that you done it with full heart. The Mefarshim asked, how did he know? He said that every mitzvah that a person make, if he make the mitzvah incomplete, the angel become a complete angel. If the mitzvah is komsi komsa, so sometimes the angel doesn't have one hand, doesn't have one leg, or short with one eyes, and etc. Hazal say when the angel took a oath, dati ki imata, now I know that you complete have a fear of heaven. That this mitzvah, to sacrifice your son, you done it with simha. You didn't have a debate. Your only son to sacrifice. I'm taking an oath, said the angel, that this mitzvah, you done it in completion. And there is not even a little bit of a doubt. So what do we see from here? That Abraham, Avinu, now I'm going back to answer what the Ozerwa answered. He said, what was the first mitzvah? Abraham Avinu. Why? He done the Brit Milah. What came after that? The Akeda. He said, in that case, blowing of the shofar come before, sorry, the Brit Milah come before blowing the shofar. Why? Because Abraham Avinu was the first one to have circumcision, Brit Milah. Other idea is, why Dafka we do the Brit Milah before the sound of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah? Hazal explained, because we want mitzvot, and as much more mitzvot that we'll do in Rosh Hashanah, that will help us to change the decree. Therefore, before we blow the shofar, we say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, look, you command us to do Brit Milah, we're doing Brit Milah. And that mitzvah should stand for us, and should be a salvation to us. That's why we blow uh, we do Brit Milah we bo- before we blow the shofar on Yom Rosh Hashanah. So we see from here that one of the most important thing, Rabotai, and now I'm going to tell you a secret. It's not my secret. I promise you, it's a secret that the mystical rabbi tell us. And listen to me carefully to what I'm saying and remember it on Yom Rosh Hashanah. Hazal tell us like this, when you hear the sound of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, you should say in your heart, Hatati, Aviti, Pashati, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Please forgive me. That means, when you listen to the sound of the shofar, you don't have to say it loud, say it in your heart, or even say it quietly. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Almighty, Hatati, Asen, Aviti, Pashati, please forgive me. Three times. If you say three times, and that's brought by the Kabbalistic rabbi, one of them, if I'm not mistaken, is Arashash, Rabbi Shalom Sharabi. Rabbi Shalom Sharabi was one of the greatest Kabbalistic after the Ari Kadosh, Rabbi Tzhak Luria. He lived around, he born around 279 years ago in Yemen. And then he came to, to Eretz Israel and he lived in Jerusalem. And the Rashash, one of his things said that if a person say, when he hear the sound of the shofar, I repeat it again, Rabotai, when you hear the sound of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, you said to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hatati, Aviti, Pashati, the Almighty, please forgive me. And some of the greatest Kabbalistic rabbis say, a person before Yom Rosh Hashanah, before the sound of the shofar, before Rosh Hashanah, should take a piece of paper and try to write his own confession. HaKadosh Baruch Hu had done that wrong. HaKadosh Baruch Hu had done that wrong. And etc. Please forgive me. And what about those that I don't remember? Right, those that I don't remember. 
הקדוש ברוך הוא, please forgive me for all my sin. And the Kabbalistic rabbi say, that, that, the guarantee that we have, that we'll get the salvation on Yom Rosh Hashanah. That means that in the sound of the shofar, now I'm going back to the shofar, we can get ourselves a credit. If we just focusing on a shofar and we listen to it and we understand that that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu want to hear us. What does he want to hear us? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu say in Gemara in Masechet Rosh Hashanah, as I mentioned, 16 folio 1, okay? Look what it says. I'll repeat it again. Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu say, Tikru lefanai. Blow in the front of me. HaKadosh Baruch Hu ask us to blow the, the sound of the shofar that I will remember. I will remember the Akeda. And by that, I'll accept your tshuva. How do you accept the tshuva? By that, that you're doing confession. You're saying to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hatati, Aviti, Pashati, please, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, forgive me. What do it mean, Atzilchem? That I should seal you for life. And Hazar say, if you do confession, oh, 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 that can change the decree completely. Now tell me, with all the COVID-19, with all the tzoris that he had, and if there is one that can say he doesn't have tzoris, I didn't see one person. Every day I get, I don't want to tell you how many numbers of phone calls. Rabbi, can you help me here? Rabbi, I have this tzoris. Rabotai, each one of us have to daven for salvation. Each one of us have to daven for forgiveness. And believe me, if you do those three things, the mystical rabbi guarantee us that we're going to be sealed and we're going to be, have a good life. So who doesn't want it? So Be'ezrat Hashem, remember when you hear the sound of the shofar, Write on a small piece of paper. Start today even. Look what you, how you upset HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Take those things. And those little words that you say, and you say HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hatati, Aviti, Pashati, please forgive me, that can change the entire decree on us. What more can we ask from HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Nothing. That's the secret behind the shofar. And that's why we're blowing the shofar. Sorry. <clears throat> My throat is very dry. So we see from here that the sound of the shofar, a matter of fact, it's all for our benefit. It's to wake us up, to do tshuva, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will write us and seal us and call on Israel, all over the Jews, all over the world, for a good life, for a sweet year, a year that's full of abundance, a year that's full of health, wealth, please God, peace, and a lot of good, 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 good year, and a year that we'll see Mashiach Tzitkenu speedily in our days, amen, can hear it. So now I'm going to give time for question. If there is any question regarding uh, Rosh Hashanah or the Shofar, if you have any question, please unmute yourself and I'll try to answer if I can. Please unmute yourself, those of you that want to ask questions. Sure. Yes. Yeah. With well, the Shofar, now, um, now they got these volunteers are asking us to blow, so now you, you, you blow for me, right? Or you, like you spit, how when you blow? That's so for the volunteers, that's so good. Blow for next Sunday. So the shofar, you like you put in the right side, you gotta blow like spit through the how. Okay, sound. so, so yeah. you you ask me here a few questions. So the shofar mm -hmm. have to be always on the right hand side. You blow it, not on the yeah. left. Okay. Okay. Why dafka on the right? Because yamin is hesed. That means yamin is compassion and mercy, while the left represent judgment. 
So what do we do? When we hold the shofar, we blow it on the right hand side. Especially put my hand here. I'm pretending that I'm holding shofar to you to understand so you can see it. That's why we blow the shofar, dafka, on the right hand side. Now, how many sound we have to make, there is a difference. Yeah. Because there is a, there, there is a mahluk at the man hazal. Yeah. The Torah tell us, tiku bahode shofar. Okay, that you should blow on the first of the seven months, you should blow the shofar. You should hear it. Yeah. How many tikkurot, according to the Torah, listen to me and don't get mistake. Stephen? Yes, sir. Nine down of tkiot. And what they are? Tkia, troa, tkia. I repeat. Tkia, troa, tkia, three times. But yes. Hazal, our sages, was debate what it mean troa? Is troa is our shvarim that we blow? Tu, 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 tu. Okay? Yes. The short sound or the long sound? Or there may be both of them together. So what do we do today? We blow all of them three times, and that gives us a hundred. How do we get a hundred? Because if each one of them three, 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 it's come to nine. Time three, 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 it's become to ninety-nine. No, yeah. the Ashkenazim blow tkia gdola, a long sound of tkia yeah. The Sfadi make hundred and one sound. Sure. When the Ashkenazim make a hundred sound. You understand? Mm -hmm. That will answer you for both of your questions that you ask. And how long should you blow, Rodi? How many seconds or, or 10 seconds, how long the blow will last? That you have to do how many For example, tkia, toot. That's yeah, tkia. Two, three seconds or something. Toot, toot, toot. I got the shofar. Toot, 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 I know that I make it very simple, but it's not simple at all. And don't depend on what I'm telling you now, because what I'm telling you now is not the correct, because you have to listen to the sound and to know exactly the timing. Yes, yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So there is turmiti. In. You have to learn it. Not everyone just come yeah. and blow shofar. Yes, now okay? practicing you also. Tell us that the job. Hazal in a Gemara Masechet Rosh Hashanah in page, I think, 43, folio 2, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken. Hazal there ask, what's happening in Rosh Hashanah if in one shul you have a beautiful hazard? Oh. He doesn't yeah. he have a beautiful voice. And in the other shoe, no, they don't have a beautiful hazard, but they have a great and a very Talmit Hacham that can blow the shofar. Hazal say, rather go to the yeah. other shul that there is a person that is a Talmit Hacham, Yeresh Amayim, that can blow the shofar, because that's the mitzvah of the day. You follow? Mm -hmm. Okay, any other question about uh, regarding the shofar? How many would have to blow for them, sorry, Rabbi Levi? Sorry? So would have to blow for them 30, like for like the volunteers now, would that be 100? I would have to go say to say in regards that how many would have to, have to blow 100 blasts? Or, or Absolutely, 30 blasts, 100 what would blasts. You have to blow 100 sound. You are 100% Same right? like you do in shul, same. Absolutely. Okay. Mea kolot. They call it Krasi. mea kolot. That means 100 sound of the shofar. You follow? Okay. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. Rav, I just have a question. You know, on Yom Kippur, when uh, they do, at the end of Neila, they do Tukya uh, Gudola, right? Mm, mm, to, mm, to end the mm. fast. Or we, what, or we, just as like what you saw on Rosh Hashanah, that we have to have uh, certain things in mind. Are, no. are we meant to have no. anything in mind? And what are we meant to say for at that point in Naila? At the end no, of Naila? Okay. Look, Naila, Naila, it's the time that Akadosh Baruch Hu. When is the time of Naila? Naila, it's time just before sunset. 
we start Na'ilah. And Na'ilah, it's the time that HaKadosh Baruch Hu actually here with us on earth. He come down to earth in Yom Kippur. When I'm telling you now, I'm getting a goose part. And that time, HaKadosh Baruch Hu coming down, 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 all Yom Kippur. He's coming down, he's coming down, he's coming down. And Na'ilah is here with us. Wherever you're standing here on earth, he's close to everyone. And that time, that's the highest level or the closer level that we can be with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Each you. And that time, that it's almost the peak, what we call it, that we can come closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And you can feel that in Na'ilah all day, everyone are half sleepy. Suddenly in Na'ilah, you get the energy like you can't believe. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu with us. And that's the time that, that if you come closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and you're focusing, that's how you can back. The, why do we blow the Tki'ah Gdola? That's a different question. That Tki'ah Gdola have nothing to do with the other Tki'ah that we do. We'll explain why do we blow a hundred. That's a different issue. There is different opinion in the Midrashim that Hazal explained. Why do we have to make a hundred sounds? That Be'ezrat Hashem, I will post maybe on Wednesday night or on Thursday night, just before Rosh Hashanah. How many sound and why? Why is it so important that we'll have, like we mentioned that have to have, we have to have a hundred sound, the Ashkenazim do a hundred, the Sparadim do hundred and one. Why Dafka a hundred? We'll explain that, that's very important. But Kiag Dola, it's come to remind us, it's come to wake up Akadosh Baruch Hu, like it's time to redeem us. It's time to redeem us. It's time for redemption. We want to be redeemed. And we're trying to remember him that the same like we're blowing the tkia gdola, we're waiting for you already, Akadosh Baruch Hu, to blow your shofar so that we can be redeemed. You follow? Any mm-hmm. other question, Rabotai? Who want to ask question? Shofar Mishiafim. Sorry, anyone say anything? The Shofar Mashiach, everybody. Yeah, Shofar Oshel Mashiach, that's it. Yeah, the sound of the Mashiach. You're 100% right. Okay, Rabotai, I hope that we now understand why we're blowing Shofar and why is it so important to listen to the sound of the Shofar on Yom Rosh Hashanah. And Be'ezrat Hashem, I would like to bless all of you that you should have a good year, a prosperity year, a year of health, a year of wealth, a year that only abundance and health, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will bring down to this world and we will say enough to all the bad things that there is in the world, especially to the plague, the COVID-19, to all the evil inclination, to all the evil sources that there is in the world. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will bless us to a good year, prosperity years, a sweet year, a sweet year that we all need. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu will cure all the sick people in the world. All of those that sick, all of those that have pain, that even little pain that they have, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will cure them. I will bless you that Be'ezrat Hashem, we're all going to be sealed in the book of life. Amen, Ken Yeratzon. To wish you all, please God, Shana Tova, Ketiva Vechatima Tova to us, to our family, and to Klal Am Yisrael. Amen, Ken Yeratzon. Amen. Thank you, Rob. All the best. Thank you, all the best. And please God, I'll see you all Wednesday or Thursday. I'll put a post. I just want to make sure that you should she all is ready for Wednesday or Thursday, and I'll confirm, and then we'll do a show, because on Thursday we can't do Parashat HaShavua, as you know, because this week we're not going to read Parashat HaShavua. It's Royal Rosh Hashanah. And maybe I'll do a bit also regarding uh, uh, why are we going, uh, why are we doing Tashlich? What is Tashlich? I maybe explain why Dafka Tashlich. Why are you going and doing Tashlich? Where is the source for Tashlich? 
בעזרת השם, I'll prepare something בלי נדר, that I try to make Rosh Hashanah more exciting for us, that we'll understand when we're standing in Rosh Hashanah. In the meantime, רבותיי, to wish you all a good evening, look after yourself, keep safe, and בעזרת השם, we'll see you soon. All the best. Good job, Rob. Oh, Thank you, Rob. Good job.